Date release sequencer. On my mark. Five. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, June 7th, and you are listening to episode 264 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for planet-side news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. So last week, the question was posed to me, would I be participating in Community Smash by R.I.? And uh, of course, when I responded to that question last week, I said I hadn't signed up for it. And I remembered yesterday why I hadn't signed up for it. It's because I had to finally move my daughter out of her college dorm. So uh, that's where I was all day yesterday. So I'm sorry I completely was not able to attend the Community Smash. Uh, I do hear, though, that... Very well, and I'm sure that we'll be getting a lot of videos out of that soon, sooner rather than later. So that's obviously what I was doing yesterday and missed it. Other than that, you know, it's just a normal week. So what's in store for this week's show? Well, first, I want to go over the June 5th PTS update, which introduced some Colossus, some Bastion, some Punisher, and some other miscellaneous changes to the game. Then I want to talk about the community video contest finalists, because the top five have been announced. I've watched all five, so I will give some impressions and also tell you guys where you can go and actually vote on them. And then after that, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the Colossus tank, uh, because there really has been little detail about the very various guns, the utility and defensive and logistics slots as well. So I'm going to do a complete rundown uh, of all of those as they currently stand on the PTS. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. So first up, like I said, June 5th, there was a test server update, and they were also running playtest schedules. Uh, They were going to do it both Saturday and today on Sunday, but for one reason or another, the Sunday stuff has been scrapped. So they only did the Saturday stuff, and they did some playtests from 10.30 to 12 Pacific and 4.30 4.30 to 6 Pacific on Saturday, June 6th. Um, I'm not sure how much... People they got into that, especially with community smash going on, but uh, they obviously these play tests are concentrated to help them get the patch ready for the live deployment. Uh, another interesting thing on the PTS right now, they have disabled the creation of orbital strikes for the play tests themselves. I think that if you have some banked, that you can still use them, but you're not able to create any more orbital strikes currently on the PTS itself. So just note that. I guess there are a lot of people saying that you're not going to be able to have good play tests on the PTS if everybody has the ability to create orbital strikes because that's all that they're going to do is orbital strike everybody to death. So that's the main reason for that happening. So let's talk about the changes that were added to the PTS this past week. Starting first with the Colossus tank, the Skylance deployed mode of the Colossus tank now has a wider and faster projectile, which makes it easier to actually hit targets. The direct damage was also increased to allow for one-shotting of non-composite armor ESFs. They also made the elevation ranges in deployed mode a bit looser than they were before. They reduced the knockback effect on aircraft. And finally, the bombardment shield can now be damaged by common explosives. And that is resist type 6, in case you were curious. Next, the mass accelerator drive. That is the MAD, which is one of the items 
that's actually in the utility slot of the Colossus. Uh, they have changed it so the cooldown timer no longer stops updating when it deactivates. It also now immediately consumes the intended amount of cordium instead of draining it over time. And again, I'll give you those cordium values a little bit later on in the show. And they've also updated the tooltip to correctly reflect its damage increase. Next, some changes to the top guns, and there are four different guns, uh, but they've made some adjustments to it. First is the Gecko had its turret elevation range increased to allow for better defense from aircraft, and the Dingo's damage was increased from 75 up to 100. Next, they took an ammo pass uh, or a pass on all the ammo capacities of each of the various weapons themselves. Uh, the Mammoth Cannon, its original capacity was 25. They've doubled that to 50. Its ammo resupply per tick, though, was reduced from 6 down to 5. The Gecko's ammo capacity was 450. It's now 750. The Goblin's was 375. It's now 750. The Pug's was 42. It's now 60. The Dingo was 78. It is now 120. And finally, the Fang was 40. It's now 60. Uh, every time I say Dingo, I just want to say, Dingo ate my baby. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know why. So get ready for Dingo jokes. Uh, maybe Rogue Plant Games wants to think about Changing the name on that one, uh, giving you a chance now. Uh, then there were some other miscellaneous changes to the Colossus. The first, the cannon should no longer wobble as much as it did before. Uh, they fixed some various issues with the cameras clipping into the tank itself. They fixed some missing cannon movement audio when you were more than 15 meters away. The first-person HUD overlay now shows the turret orientation like other tanks do. Uh, its reticle now updates properly when switching between deployed and non-deployed mode. It has a starting cordium of a flat amount instead of re a regenerating over time amount. The cert screen shows the proper amount and type of currency. The currency to purchase everything on the Mer on the Colossus is via merit, just so you know, except for the guns. Uh, you can... The, the all the different guns the you know the gecko goblin pug dingo and fang you can purchase those with actual daybreak cash um and uh at least on the test server i could purchase each of them with one cert so i'm assuming you could purchase the guns with certs as well but all the other stuff underneath it you know the the utility the uh, defense and the logistics slots are all purchasable via merit. And the good news is when you log into the test server, if you want to test out this stuff, uh, I did have a fully stocked supply of 19,000 merit when I logged in, and that's on every single character. So if you wanted to go in and play around with the Colossus uh, and sort things out differently or merit them out differently, you do have some merit out there on the PTS. Next, the base resistance to orbital strikes was also increased on the Colossus, which allows it to survive an orbital strike with enough health. Uh, and if you take the fallout hardening uh, defensive slot, it's going to increase that bonus even further. Again, I'll talk about that fallout hardening slot a little later in this week's show. Uh, and the final comment other Colo under Colossus is that they will be looking at its mobility in a later update. And I'm glad they're thinking about the mobility because I still think that the Colossus is going to be hard to use as an anti-Bastion platform because the Bastion is much more mobile in my mind than the Colossus could ever be because obviously the Bastion is in, an, in a wide open skybox, super easy to move anywhere that you want on the map, whereas a Colossus is restricted to roadways and other flat surfaces. I mean, I can especially see on a continent like Amorish, it's going to be very difficult for the Colossus to take on a Bastion very easily. And a ba it should be very easy for a Bastion to run away. So I'll definitely be interested to see what their mobility changes are in a later update. And of course, speaking of the Bastion Fleet Carrier, there were also some changes done to that on the PTS. First, its weak point resistance values have been changed to increase damage from more resources. Those are first the resistance type 5, that's light anti-vehicle damage, was increased to minus 150. Um, 
the resist type seven, which is tank cannon cannons was, re- was changed hugely. It used to be minus 25. It's now minus 200. So, I mean, it's going to take a lot more damage from tank cannons. And then finally the air to ground warheads, which is resist type 23. It used to be zero. It's now negative 25. So, uh, it's definitely going to take damage now from air to ground warheads, but really the big one is tank cannons is going to take an awful lot of damage from tank cannons now than it did before. Moving on to infantry weapons, let's talk about the NS-66 Punisher. So its default fragment fragmentation underbarrel ammo capacity was increased from 2 to 3, so uh, a little bit more ammo being held in it. The Havoc debuff audio was updated, and extended magazines will no longer affect the underbarrel uh, of the Punisher itself. So again, if you're using ex- extended magazines, it's not going to increase the ammo capacity of the underbarrel. Next, the Rocklet Rifle, which is the light assault tool. Uh, a lot of this has to do with the bug of being able to reload the Rocklet Rifle immediately. So they've replaced locklets with something called Sabat Rocklets. Uh, they have surface damage for increased accuracy, or, or they've sacrificed damage, I'm sorry, for increased accuracy at range. When you equip them, there's an alternate fire that is replaced with a low bloom three round burst and re- projectile velocity is increased for both of those fire modes. And the dev note on this is we've said in the past, but reload speed increases should no longer affect the rocket rifle in unintended ways, i.e. those hyper reload speeds that I mentioned before. A consequence of this fix is that Typhoon rocket implementation had to be reworked, though players should see no gameplay impact and locklets had to be replaced as an option altogether. Next, the facility modules. These are the new war asset system in the game. They fixed a bugged state that would prevent people from placing modules on, from the map screen itself. They also changed it so that they're now sorted alphabetically, so they should be easier to locate. And then due to the feedback surrounding the advanced vehicle access module, they're going to be removing it. And as a baseline, allow main battle tanks and liberators to be pulled from large outposts and facilities from the game itself. Finally, in this PTS update, there were some other miscellaneous changes, fixes, and additions. The first one's a really good one. They made it so any player who is BR5 or lower cannot be invited to an outfit. You can still apply to an outfit, but this is going to eliminate the scripts that people have been running to instantly invite brand new players into outfits to make them as large as humanly possible and then usually just abandoning those players to just survive. So giving this a cap from BR 1 to 5 that they're not going to be able to do it uh, I think is a good temporary solution to this. So they also fixed an issue where the base capture HUD could go missing. They fixed some issues preventing players uh, without outfits to show their base capture score. Uh, You should no longer be able to drive through the structure holding up the construction gate shield. Remember, that was a, a bug that they still had discovered last week. The Thumper SE's directive naming scheme is now consistent with other weapons themselves. Uh, and they renamed the Maelstrom Turbo Laser to the V26 Maelstrom Turbo Laser. And this is more in line to let Maelstrom know that this is named after him. And then they made some more updates to the names of the relic sites on Desolation itself. So all this stuff that I just read is all available out there on the PTS right now. I logged into it this morning uh, because I wanted to do, like I said, that third topic this week is going to be Uh, all the different options that you can purchase on the Colossus itself. So you can get out there and play with it and check it out. Like I said, there isn't going to be any large-scale playtests for it. Uh, I would like to see them announce some for during the week so that they can get some other feedback from this stuff uh, because I think they need to do as many playtests as possible before this stuff goes live. But as always, the devs do want you to go on the PTS, check this stuff out, and give them feedback because that's how they're going to make it as best as humanly possible. But with that, let's move on to community creator videos. So 
So last week, Rogue Planet Games announced that they had received a full 75 different videos from content creators within the Planet Side 2 community itself. And that's that's pretty awesome, I have to say. The fact that they were able to get 75 different people to submit gameplay videos or, or whatever type of video, some some community content. I mean, so to get 75 of them that they had to whittle down to five, that is an absolute ton and i do i've seen a lot of the set not the not the majority of the 75 but i've been watching them as they come out here and there and uh, checking them out but i have watched all of the five finalists so if you want to check them out and vote for them the there are two ways you can do it one i'm going to include a link in this week's show notes so you can click that link and go through to the actual post itself. And then all the way at the bottom, there is a link for a survey monkey survey where you can go and you need to enter in your in-game character name it has to be unique. And you can also then vote for one of the five finalists to determine the actual grand prize winner. And the other way to do it is just go to planetside2.com. And then in the news section, there is an option to, to jump right to this and actually watch uh, all five of the videos. They also have a YouTube playlist for them as well. So you can just watch one through five straight through uh, and see them all without having to go into each individual one. The survey itself is going to remain open through Thursday, June 11th. So if you, it's, today is the 7th, that means you have four days. And it's going to be open till 11.59 p.m. Pacific. So once we hit Friday uh, Pacific time, you're not going to be able to uh, vote for this any longer. And that's when Rogue Planet Games is going to announce the grand prize winner. And as we know, uh, the grand prize winner is going to get a shirt, a signed shirt, plus a title in game. Uh, you know, they're going to get a whole bunch of stuff within the game itself. But just the five that got chosen, they each got 10,000 Daybreak Cash, uh, $100 uh, in game, basically, for doing these videos. Uh, in being selected as a finalist. So a huge congrats to the folks who put this out. Uh, and the videos themselves, one of them was made by uh, the outfit German Sovereignty. One is by Kamikaze78. One is by Pandemonium. One is by Alpha141. Uh, and the final one is done by Power Gamer. Those were li listed as the top five. Uh, and like I said, I went through and, and checked them out. Uh, they, they're going to announce the grand prize winner on Friday. Um, I watched, like I said, I watched all five of these this morning before recording this week's show. Uh, the German Sovereignty one, I really like. It has a very R Rammstein feel to it um, and really good video in it. Uh, Kamikaze's, I watched his maybe two weeks ago when he originally released it. Uh, really good video on that one. Uh the one by Pandemonium, it's titled Svan Rand. Uh, I didn't like that one as much as I liked the other ones. Uh, I can see the appeal to it. Uh, there was definitely some cool shots taken throughout it, but it certainly was my least favorite of the five. Uh, the next one by Alpha141 is Vengeance. Uh, that one was excellently well done. Uh, showed a nice... Uh, the the number of people he got to help participate in this is staggering because he has an entire battle basically shown between NC and TR where he's got tons of NC tanks rolling over TR and then TR returning the favor at the end. Really well done. Really, really well done. And then the final one titled Worth the Risk by Power Gamer uh, definitely had a unique feeling to it. By far the most unique out of all the videos that were done. Uh, it's got a nice... Uh, a feature where the video is continuously pulling backwards and as it pulls backwards it's you know revealing itself through doorways and through other stuff like that it's it's really well done it's really well stitched together uh definitely one of my favorite out of all of them now i did have some trouble with the voting process here because a I'm friends with Alpha, A, B, I'm friends with Kamikaze, and I was concerned about showing some favoritism uh, to these folks. So there is a way around showing favoritism, and that's because you can actually go into the survey itself 
And well, I've already taken the survey, so I'm not about to do it a second time. Um, I'm not going to say who I voted for because I don't want to show any favoritism. But of the three, my favorites were the German Sovereignty one, the Outfit trailer, uh, Alpha 140's ones titled Vengeance, and Kamikaze's titled For the Glory. Uh, I, I definitely liked Worth the Risk by Power Gamer, that, that fourth one, as the, the last one as well, uh, just because of that stylistic element that he put in it. Uh, they're all really well done. And any of the five that are chosen as winners... I would be happy with ultimately. But again, because I'm friendly with a couple of these folks, I'm not going to mention which one of them I voted for because I don't want to make either of them feel bad if I voted for one of their videos over somebody else's. But again, all five of these are awesome and they all earned a pretty goddamn cool reward in game just for being selected as the top five. So I encourage all my listeners to get up off your asses and vote. It takes 30 seconds you know, get out there and do it. You definitely should do it. But with that, let's move on to our third topic this week, and let's talk about a little more in-depth on the Colossus tank. So the things that I want to talk about in the Colossus tank is stuff that really hasn't been highlighted in any of the PTS notes or... uh, anything like that. They haven't gone into depth on what the various uh, turrets that you can have for the gun, not in the main cannon. We know everything pretty much about the main cannon at this point, but we don't know about the uh, front right and left and the back right and left turrets uh, on the Colossus itself. We don't know too much about the utility slots. We don't know too much about the defensive slots, and we don't know too much about the logistic slots. I mean, the uh, PTS notes that they released last week, not the uh, June 5th one, uh, didn't even mention all the different options that you can have. You a- actually need to go into PTS to check them out. So uh, I just wanted to do my listeners some justice and actually go over these so you know what each one is and what each one does. And I'm going to start off with the weapons themselves. So again, we know exactly what the main cannon is, the Mammoth Cannon. We know that it can you know pierce vehicles when it's in sky... Sh- you know, the sky mode and deployed mode, and it can damage all the various uh, hard points or weak points of the uh, Bastion itself. We know everything about the Colossus tank. What we don't know is about the turrets themselves, and there are five different choices for the turrets. Again, there is a front right and left and a rear right and left cannon, and the majority of them are the same, like there's four for each of them and three out of the four are consistent against both front and rear. Uh, the fourth weapon on each of them is a little different depending on whether you're doing uh, front turrets or back turrets. So let's talk about the uh, common turrets amongst all of them first. So the first one is called the M20 Gecko. It is a 20 millimeter heavy machine gun with a 480 uh, RPM on it. Its damage is 200 at 10 meters and all the way out to 147 at 100 meters. Has a 2.5 second reload time and its ammo is 50 in the gun when it's fully reloaded and 750 total ammo on it. Now one common theme across all of them is that you only have access to zoom on these. You know, the very zoom upgate updates. There are no utility or ammo upgrades and I'm assuming that's yet because I'd be very surprised if they didn't didn't give, you know, reload times to these and ammo increases to these like every other uh, weapon vehicle platform weapon in the game has. So uh, I'm wondering if that's just going to come in a future update. But again, that's the M20 Gecko heavy machine gun. Next is the M12 Goblin SP. This is an anti-infantry weapon. Has a 500. 45 RPM. Its damage is 167 at 10 meters out to 147 at 100 meters. It has a 50 ammo in the weapon itself uh, and 750 ammo um, in the uh, chamber itself. And it has a three second reload time. You know, I missed the reload time on the Gecko. It's a 2.5 second reload time on the Gecko itself. Now, the Gecko is what everything comes with standard. You automatically have the gecko unlocked on all of these. You do need to purchase the goblin itself. 
Uh, next is the M75 Fang. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the M75 Fang. And this is modeled after the C75 Viper. So it's just like the lightning turret. It, and like the Viper, though, it uses heat shells uh, to damage armor. So it's straight up anti-armor weapon. Uh, it has a 218 RPM, does 20, 225 damage flat. But it also has 250 damage at 1 meter to 25 damage at 3 meters indirect damage. It has 4 rounds loaded in it and 60 additional ammo. But it also has a reload time of 4.25 seconds. Definitely the longest reload time out of all of the cannons. And I'm going to add a little slight correction to the fang. The fang is only available in the front, right, or left turret slot uh, for the Colossus itself. What's available in the back, right, and left turret slot, you ask? Well, that would be the Dingo ML6. The Dingo ML6 launches a barrage of short-range anti-aircraft missiles, which have a smart lock guidance system added to them, which will steer them into enemy aircraft they get within range of. They have a 240 RPM. They do a flat 100 damage, but they also do 150 at 0.5 meters out to 25 at 2 meters worth of indirect damage. Uh, it has 6 ammo in it and 120 uh, reload. It also has a 3 second reload time. Now, next up would be the final one, which is the Pug. And that is has high explosive warheads with a large blast radius. It does maintain light anti-armor capabilities on direct hits. Uh, this has 60 RPM, uh, 300 damage flat, so decent amount of da big damage actually. Uh, it also has 500 damage at one meters out to 50 damage at five meters indirect damage. So you can see a pretty big splash on that one. Has three ammo in the chamber and 60 additional to reload with. And it has a full 3.5 second reload speed. So again, there are your various weapons. Again, they all come standard with geckos in all four spots. Uh, you can add goblins in all four spots. You can add pugs in all four spots if you wanted to. Uh, and then you can add the fang to the front spots and the dingo to the two back spots to it as well. Um, also note that, again, like I said, you get the gecko for free in all of them, but you do need to purchase the other ones for every single spot, much like the galaxy is a great example. Uh, you know, you need to purchase a left and a right weapon for all of them so you have to do the same thing with the colossus itself so uh it could cost quite a bit to cert this thing out to you know purchase all these originally but moving on let's talk about the utility slots themselves now the colossus comes with the mass accelerator drive or the mad rank one by default and if you activate the mad it will automatically use right off the bat 1000 cordium and then for the next 15 seconds, the main cannon shots do 50% more damage. They fly 100% more faster, more faster, 100% faster, and they can pierce vehicles. Each shot, however, will overheat the weapon's cooling system, and it will inflict 1,000 damage to the Colossus itself. Uh, again, we saw them show this on the live stream last time. Now, if you bump this up to rank 2, the cordium drain is only 834, and the damage is only 840. So as you can see, uh, as you cert this up by spending merit, uh, you will use less cordium and take less damage. When we move on to rank 3, it's now down to 688 cordium and only 670 damage. And if you put it down to the final rank, the best you can do uh, is only taking 500 cordium, but only taking 500 damage. So when you get it to rank four, you're obviously cutting it in half. In addition, though, if you didn't want to have MAD, you could purchase fire suppression, and that has all the normal fire suppression ranks. Uh, built into that. So those are your two options for the utility slot. Moving on to the defensive slot, you get none of these by default, but there are three options. First is the bolstered bombardment shield, or the BBS. Uh, basically what this does is it reduces damage to the bombardment shield from all sources. If you have it at rank one, it'll reduce damage by 5%. Rank 2 does 6%, rank 3 does 7%, rank 4 does 
rank four does nine percent and the final rank of five does a ten percent reduction in damage next option is fallout hardening and this one again not by default you have to purchase this one what it does is in, it increases the base 30% orbital strike resistance of the vehicle by 40%. In addition, it is no longer affected by physics impulses from orbital strikes and other weaponized sources while deployed, which basically means if you have fallout hardening and the Colossus tank is deployed, you cannot get knocked back by orbital strikes. And the nice thing is, as you can see, the... Colossus already has a 30% res resistance to orbital strike. Um, you're going you're going to get an extra 10. So now it's going to be up to a 40% resistance. If you bump this to rank 2, it's 44%, rank 3 is 49%, rank 4 is 54%, and the max that you can get is at rank 5 a 60% reduction or a 60% resistance to orbital strikes for the Colossus itself. Now granted if you just purchase the base one, you're going to get that uh uh, no longer being affected by physics impulses. So uh, it almost feels to me like this is a great one just to get if you're getting orbital striked a lot, obviously. Uh, the third option in the defense slot is the Nanite Auto Repair System. We already know what that one does. Uh, that's what it is. And then moving to the logistics slot itself, there are three options for the logistics slot. First is the Colossus Advanced Mobile Station, or the CAMS. And then when while it's deployed, any friendly soldiers can use it as a respawn point in addition to all its other deployed effects. So now you've basically turned the Colossus into a Sunderer as well. The next option would be the Cordium Recycler. And what this does, it enables Cordium regeneration over time. If you buy just the first rank of it, you're going to restore 33 Cordium per second. Note that if you have the bombardment shield active, that the cordium recycler is disabled. So just note that. Now, if you get this up to rank two, you're going to restore 37.25. Rank four is 41.5. Rank five, uh, rank four is 45.75. And at max rank, you can restore 50 cordium per second with the cordium recycler, which isn't too bad if you if you think about it. And then finally, the last logistics slot would be the improved cooling system. And what this one does is it reduces overheat damage done to the vehicle caused by firing the primary weapon while mad or deployed into the Skylands battery mode by 10%. And each rank that you bump that up is another 10%, so 10, 20, 30, 40. And the final rank, rank 5, you can reduce the overheat damage by 50%. So... If you have the improved cooling system in place uh, and you also have the uh, rank four mass accelerator drive, you're actually only going to take 250 damage every time you fire that, which in the mad mode at least, which isn't too bad if you ask me. Um, so again, those are all the current upgrades that you can do to the Colossus tank itself. Again, these are all out there on the PTS, so you can purchase them. Uh, they're all listed at one, all the guns are listed at one cert, so certainly easy to pick those all up. Uh, one problem is you can't purchase all the different uh, uh, utility, defense, and logistics slots because you just don't have enough merit. Uh, I'm hoping that this, there's some sort of merit regeneration over time to allow people to unlock all of these because I had to do it on three different characters to unlock everything to get the full uh, percentages for everybody for this week's show. So just note that. Uh, but there you go. If you wanted to know more about the Colossus, there's all the stuff that you can currently buy for it. But with that, let's wrap up this week's show and move on to housekeeping. Hello, housekeeping. Hello. Ah, fuck. Sorry, bro. So no emails, uh, anything like that this week. So that is going to be it for this week's show. As always, how can you get in touch with me or the show itself? Well, your first stop should always be my website, which is www.instantactionpodcast.com. That's where you can find the show notes and the links to every topic that I go over in this week's show. You'll be able to find a link directly to vote for the uh, community video finalists as well at instantactionpodcast.com. 
gmail.com. You can also email me at instantactionshow at gmail.com. And I always recommend you follow me on Twitter at instactpodcast. But in closing, if you've enjoyed this week's show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere else. Also, feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show. But finally, thanks for listening and keep spamming that join combat, formerly known as Instant Action Button. Derringer out. Three, two, one, Bork. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. Sorry. <laughs>